We have a guest in the studio. He's a visual artist, a young uh, baggy visual artist here in the capital city of Abuja. Uh, and he is Sally Ibrahim Lamshi. Welcome to the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so uh, you are a young visual artist. Uh, could you take us through your journey? You know, how did you start art? Um, it has not been easy, by the way, because when I started art, although I was a little that time in secondary school, no one's to say that this is good. Everybody was saying uh, what I'm actually doing is like prohibited and some kind of things like that. But I took it as a challenge to the family share. Mm. I took it as a challenge. It was not that easy. Although I, I did not dream of becoming an artist, I dream of becoming a police officer. But due to the country situation, I had an admission to, uh, to study art, but I took it as a challenge. That's when my dad told me that uh, I just have to bear it. And immediately when I get to the school, I had a mentor. He was a kind of telling me that there are some that we come here, know how to draw and the rest like that. But due to the situation of things and influence of friends, the, you will see that uh, uh, most of them will graduate without a good result and not knowing how to paint and draw very well but some that we take it as a challenge like especially me now i would i should take it take it as a challenge by special grace of god i will graduate with a good result but unfortunately i was happy with that because it was a it was sleepless nights all day sometimes i go to lecture sleeping because i just want to know how to draw but when Whenever we go to lecture, me and my friends, you see that I'm sleeping, but they don't actually know what I used to do at night. Mm -hmm. That was the main challenge that I, I had okay. in art. So, uh, very interesting story there. Um, now, <laughs> you said earlier that you wanted to be a police officer. Yes. Uh, how did that aspiration came well, about? Okay, uh, although I went to Nigerian Police uh, Secondary School in Castina State, that's uh, because w especially when I see the uh, police uh, work, I normally used to interest me so much, especially when they are insulting policemen that uh, they, they are corrupt and the rest like that. But when I went to the police secondary school, I see that seriously Nigerian police are kind of trying. Mm, really? That's what brought into the as in that's, that's that very patriotic. <laughs> yeah, that's very patriotic, you know, of you to say because uh, that's one force that has been battered in terms of, you know, public perception and image and all of that. But uh, let's talk about, you know, what you are doing now. That you are now an artist and uh, for how long have you been doing this and uh, how do you get inspired? What keeps you moving? I graduated uh, two years ago in a college of education, Zuba. And immediately that, I did my IT. After my IT, that's when I started painting. But that couldn't come to my mind that the art business we move faster like that because at then i don't know how business used to go although it was just one faithful day my friend advised me that i supposed to be on instagram so it was just like a joke like a month time i opened my account and the rest like that from nowhere, someone sent me a request that he's in love with my work. And I think he promotes artisans. So he told me that uh, he loved my works and he loved the way I, I work like every day. So he would like to like promote me. 
he told me that uh, he was going to select some works. I thought maybe it's all these kind of scammers and the rest like that. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it wasn't. He told me how to show, I should tell him the price of my works and he's going to buy like three or four from me. Mm -hmm. But up to today, the person has not come yet to pick the works. The works are still down. Mm -hmm. But the person paid me my money so that I can use it to start the art business that's very well. That's interesting. Mm. That's interesting. Oh. Well, uh, what would you say, you know, back here in Nigeria, some would say we don't really appreciate art. Uh, and then the way we buy, you know, foodstuffs and other things in the markets is not the way we buy art here. So would you say people patronize art these days? People patronize arts, but not that uh, because some kind of uh, customers, when they come to you, you see it as if they are buying a, a cup of rice. Seriously, you see it as if they are buying a cup of rice from the market, but that's not how uh, art is. is. Um, and one thing with art is that uh, the art price of uh, the materials, let me see, the materials are, very, are going higher every day. That's most problem with art. Mm. You may go this week to buy uh, art materials. Tomorrow now you see that the price have changed. Mm. That's one problem with art. Okay. Mm. Now, tell us about how you get inspired. What the, how do you, uh, what's the thinking process? And how do you come about deciding what you want to paint? Uh, what happens before you paint? Okay, um, sometimes it come like a dream. Sometimes I wake up very early in the morning, just lie down on my bed. Then some things will start coming up. Once they, are, they start coming up like that, I just have to like calm down myself, looking at some of my works and bringing out some sketches like Mostly things that normally used to come out are the things that are happening presently. Mm -hmm. Like are things that are happening presently. I don't like uh, something like this. It was one fateful day. I just like sitting down. I I have to drive out um, the concept unity in diversity. Mm -hmm. That's the title of this work. Unity in diversity. Mm -hmm. And looking at the work, you see that uh, you are seeing some past presidents and some legends like that. Mm. Oh, these are the legends, right? Yes. Interesting. You look at Abdi Salami and uh, Obasanjo, the rest. Interesting. So, so, what, so uh, maybe you should explain further. Uh, you know what what this depicts what does it show yes we can see past leaders uh, but we can also see some other persons there and someone carrying the Nigerian flag and all of that what does it signify um, the reason I try to the unity in diversity because despite every other thing football used to bring people together okay and what I'm trying to teach in this work is that uh, in Nigeria we have uh, 250 tribes and when you are looking at it the the concept in whole is talking about peace and coming together yeah. in Nigeria so these are the kind of things that no matter how, how you are, who you are, still there must be something that will bring us together. Mm -hmm. So in a reason like this, whenever something happens, we just have to call each other together to bring, uh, to bring out a resolution of a conflict into your community or country, that's most uh, mm. about your work. Very, so, very so, interesting. So, so this is, you, according to you, this is your best, this is one of the work you love most. Yes. Why do you love this particular work? 
I'm in love with the color. Okay. And the concept. Mm. Okay, can you walk us through the concept? Yes. Okay. Can you tell us why or what what is it about the concept that you love? The concept that I say that uh, it goes with the resolution of conflict. Mm -hmm. That's why I try to eat uh, unity in diversity. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, how else do you see art? You know, uh, because I mean, art and culture is something that has played roles in societies even before our own time. Now, uh, how? What role do you think that art will play? in our own Nigeria of today, in terms of education, in terms of creating awareness, you know, in terms of you know, bringing about you know, unity and progress, just like you did in this art. What kind of role do you think that this can play? You know, arts uh, give pass in information very well. And it teaches uh, most, especially kids, teach kids some kind of uh, things like in a sense that when you see something being drawn, some children don't even mind about the concept, mostly. They normally talk about the colors and the um, color blend and the characters. That's most thing that uh, give about that. Mm. Okay. Now, you are Baggy by tribe. Yes. Uh, do we have many Baggy, you know, artists now within the capital city? Would you say there are more Baggy people venturing into art? Yes, there are most of them, mm. and I try to know them. Okay. Yes, but although some are giving up. Okay. But the only advice I normally used to tell them that normally any business is not that easy. Mm. Any business is not easy. You just have to make up your mind. Because okay. there is no business that you do that you will not lose. Mm. You just have to give, you have made up your mind that no matter what comes in, I have to take it, I have to bear it. Okay, so do you have your own personal gallery or, you know, where do you sample your works? Um, I don't actually have a gallery. The only gallery I have is at home, my room. Mm. I kept my works there. I wake up every morning, I look at it. It's been inspired me. Some works, I'll just be looking at it and laugh. That's what gives me joy most. Mm. From the way this artwork looks, it looks like it's saying something about the Baggy people. As the artist who made this, what can you tell us about this painting? Definitely, this artwork is mainly made for Baggies. And the title itself is My Culture. Yeah, that's my culture. The, it, the artwork itself actually explains how the Baggies normally go to firewood and maybe coming back from the pan wine and um, other stuff like that because normally when the baggies are the men are going for the pan wine the women normally used to help them to bring it back that's why we are seeing the person in front is what holding the calabash and the other things inside and the back side of it is consists of the firewood itself and here there is a human being outside here mm -hmm. uh, consists of carrying some things mm -hmm. at, at, on his head mostly that's how biking people normally do either you carry it at the top of your head or you do carry it at the shoulder mm -hmm. yes but popularly no that's how they used to normally carry firewood mm -hmm. at the shoulders mm -hmm. yes and here actually explain how at then we normally live inside this type of hut. Yes. So I, this brings me to a question that a lot of people, when you mention the baggy people, what comes to their mind is uh, this archaic olden days people who live in huts, who don't have an ambition and all that. Do you think that is changing now? It's actually changing. That is why I'm trying to bring it back oh. to nature. Oh. Yes. Okay. With my artwork, I'm, I'm, I will assure that I'll bring a message, I'll pass a message across to the Baggies okay. in order for them to remember that this is where we come from. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you think uh, uh, the Baggy people 
are now standing up? Do you think they are coming out and doing things that they were not, not known to do before? Yes. Okay. Actually, yes. Because this, oh, there was a day one of my aunts actually came here because she doesn't actually she doesn't even know that this is how the hot look like at, at then. So whenever when she saw this, she actually ordered a painting or something like this. Yes. So she should just be looking at it to let it be giving her inspiration into that. Thank you very much. we have in the studio an artist a visual artist as a matter of fact uh, and then we're discussing arts you know and uh, his journey in the crafts you know of uh, doing it I mean it's not something that many people uh, especially in this part of our you know part of the world fancy you know the whole issue about arts and everything mm -hmm. uh, so Sally Ibrahim uh, Lamishi is with us in the studio now uh, we saw some of, we just saw some of your works, you know, uh, earlier on, uh, Zainab paid you a visit at your uh, site, uh, I would say, or workshop, or, you know, and all of that. Um, take us through how you are able to sustain yourself, you know, doing this, because we're at a time where there's a lot of, you know, unemployment, you know, young people are looking up to government for white collar jobs and all of that. Uh, with this engagement, how have you been able to fend for yourself? Um, normally, before I finish school, I, although I don't like government work, really? because I don't like paying uh, monthly uh, salary. Okay. Really? Okay, That's the most thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. One thing about me, I like struggling and to be able to sustain myself. Mm -hmm. Though the art market has not been easy, but I think uh, everything is going to be better. Because I don't just uh, produce artwork, mm -hmm. I also produce canvas. And I sell canvas for people being stretched and uh, being primed. Mm. Okay, well, okay. And that's most thing that gave me. Uh, <laughs> that's most All right, so you are going more professional. Being, Someone being is lost. And being prime, can you just break it down Explain because I that. don't really understand what being stretch and being prime means. Okay, before be, being paint, when I stretch it, before being paint, there is a, a paint and emotion that we do use used to mix. Okay. Emotion and uh, top bone, we mix it together before we prime it. Okay. okay. Yeah, still be <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's that's interesting. So you do all of that. You decided to diversify. Yes. How is the uh, digital technology now, for instance, you know, aiding your work, you know, as an artist in these days, um, social media and the rest of them? Yeah, that is great because most of my clients is from social media. Mm. Most of them. Especially my canvas, the way I produce my canvas is from social media. And every single, every single day, I used to be called that she produce, maybe give me 20 pieces, 10 pieces, most of the time. Okay, so let's talk about your customers. What is the nature of your customers? Are they Nigerians or are they mostly foreigners? Or what is the nature? Yeah, most of my customers in paintings are from are foreigners. Oh. Yes, most of them. But basically, like um, the canvas aspect is yeah. from Nigeria. Okay, so why do they patronize more of the canvas? Is there something particular about it? Yes, I see that uh, because when <coughs> I see that when I graduate from school, I see that I can do this because I see that I, I'm not that selling at work. Oh. Let me like that. Yes. I see that. Let me just go into this. I started learning it, but not that selling that time. Okay. I have to learn it to become professional in it. So I learned it, I started selling in it. and So there's in, more money in that than yes, the actual Yes, than the actual talk. Okay. All right, then. Well, thank you so much. Uh, very interesting. Thank you for joining us on the program this morning to talk about your craft. Uh, we hope that uh, you continue to, to grow, uh, you know, in your chosen 
uh, craft. Uh, I may hope you... to come to your gallery one day. Yes, and, I, <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps I should have one too. Yes, I would love, you know. I would love one too as well. All right. Well, we've been speaking with Salah Ibrahim Lamishi. He is an he's a visual artist, and uh, he just you know talked to us about his experience, you know, doing what he loves doing. <laughs>